అయినా సరే బట్ ఫ్రైడే క్లాస్ బ్రహ్మ నువ్వే కదా గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ సార్ గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ వన్ అండ్ ఆల్ టుడే మై టాపిక్ ఇస్ ట్రక్ ఏస్ ఆఫ్ ఫెజల్ ఫిష్లా అండ్ ఇట్స్ కన్స్ట్రిక్ మేనేజ్మెంట్ ట్రక్ ఏస్ ఆఫ్ ఫెజల్ ఫిష్లా ఇస్ వన్ ఆఫ్ ద కామన్ నియనైటల్ ఎమర్జెన్సీ so we need to know in detail about the trachea esophageal fistula as neonate is not a small child coming to definition it is an abnormal connection between the trachea and the esophagus it is formed because of the failure of the division of the foregut properly it is most commonly congenital and it can be acquired also due to some malignancies and after some laryngectomy surgeries and and if there is an equivalence between tracheostomy tube and rail tube also it can occur in as a acquired cause it is occurs as early in the fetal life as 3 to 6 weeks of the gestational age coming to the incidence it is in 1 in 3000 to 4000 with a slight male predominance approximately 20 to 25% of these infants are associated with additional congenital anomalies of which cardiac anomalies are the most common and vector anomalies are commonly associated with these type of uh, syndromic childs and uh, recently significant incidence of non vector anomalies were also studied and like cymbalical arteries and genital defects and respiratory abnormalities are also associated with the tracheoesophageal fistula and esophageal atresia it is associated with the some trisomies trisomy 13 patayu and 18 it is adverse and 21 it is with the down syndrome it seems multifactorial in sporadic also coming to classification of the various classifications gross classification is most commonly followed it, it divided into a to e type out of which uh, type c is the most common and type a is a simple esophageal atresia which has no connection with the trachea or respiratory tract and it but it is most commonly associated with the cardiac problems type b is having esophageal atresia with the blind pouch is communicating with that trachea type c is a esophageal atresia and the distal esophageal segment is communicating with the trachea or bronchus and type d which is also uh, present with most uh, proximal and distal both the connections are there type e is not having esophageal atresia and it is called as h type out of which type c is the most common it is of uh, 85.7% coming to severity classification there are two severity classification one was uh, spitz and uh, second one was watterson out of his spitz cl- classification is most commonly followed from 1994 onwards it is based upon the weight of the newborn and associated congenital anomalies and they divided into three classes group 1 group 2 and group 3 group 1 is if the weight of the child is more than 1500 grams with no cardiac anomalies and the survival rate they defined as 98.5% group 2 is weight is less than <clears throat> 1500 grams and there are no major cardiac anomalies it is uh, survival rate is around 82% if uh, for group 3 the weight is less than 1500 grams and they are having no cardiac anomalies the survival rate is 50% come to watson classification they divided into category a b c based upon the weight and associated congenital anomalies and association of the respiratory infections if the category a is if the weight of the child is more than 2.5 kg can undergo surgery immediately also if the weight is 1800 to 2500 grams with pneumonia and are having any congenital anomalies short term delay can be taken need stabilization of the patient prior to the surgery if the weight of the child is less than 1800 grams and having severe pneumonia requires a staged surgical repair coming to diagnosis it can be done prenatally and postnatally also in prenatally if the antenatal is showing polyhydramnesh the 
there is chances of having the patient is having esophageal atresia and some patients will go into preterm labor and there is the absence of stomach bubble in the ultrasound gives a suspicion for the tracheoesophageal fistula. Coming to postnatal diagnosis or symptoms, there is excessive salivation, drooling, excessive coughing, choking, repeated cyanotic spells, respiratory chest infections, and coming to radiological evaluations, the chest X-ray uh, will show a coiled nasogastric tube and unable to pass the nasogastric tube more than 8 to 10 centimeters. And even ultrasonography, even MRI can demonstrate the presence of tracheoesophageal fistula. Coming to preoperative assessment, we have to rule out any associated respiratory tract infection. There is every chance of aspiration of the secretions. There is every possibility of the prematurity of the baby because and there are there will be liver and renal impairment also due to immaturity uh, and there will be associated congenital anomalies we should be looking into it and the radiological evaluation like chest x-ray ultrasound 2d echo to rule out associated any cardiac anomalies and any other anomalies routine blood investigations cbc and serum creatinine and liver um, liver profile to rule out any associated sepsis and renal and liver impairments Preoperative bronchoscopy in some situations they will do to know the position of the fistula, number of the fistula, and size of the fistula. And the hemodynamic status we have to know about the patient and any surgical history of the, if the baby is having in prayer, like gastrostomy. In a stage of procedures, they will come later. Coming to preoperative preparation, ligation of tracheoesophageal fistula is urgent but not emergent. But it's emergency in situations like if the, it is associated with respiratory insufficiency requiring ventilatory support. There are several interventions to protect the lung from the aspiration pneumonia, like avoid feeding and give, keep the patient on the TPN or IV fluids and keep the patient upright position to avoid gastroesophageal reflux disease, intermittent suctioning the upper pouch and administer antibiotic to treat the sepsis and aspiration pneumonia. Coming to general measures in patients of in, in this subset of group that is infants, there will be difficulty in IV cannulation in many of the situations because sometimes the baby weight also will be less. We have to take alternative precautions while taking the cannulations and rule out any associated congenital anomalies and they are more prone for hypoxia. The FRC is very less and they have very less number of alveoli. There is immature sympathetic system and there is more vagal predominance because, uh, because of the situation. We should avoid the hypoxia in these patients and avoid hypothermia and avoid hypoglycemia. They are more prone, prone for these two situations. There will be difficult intubation because of the anatomical position of the airway and size of the head. Proper IV fluid management according to the fasting status and proper post-operative analgesia. Coming to different types of surgical options for tracheoesophageal fistula is for newborns, it is it can be thoracotomy, mostly right thoracotomy, and sometimes it can be with the one lung ventilation, thoracoscopy procedures, they will do. The approach will be decided by the surgeon after discussion with the anesthesiologist whether the baby is fit for one lung ventilation or not. Coming to pre-medication, anti-silodox with atropine and glycoperlate and injection vitamin K, 1 mg over 3 days, IMR, IV, as there will be prematurity in this, most of these patients. And regarding monitoring, we have to monitor the ECG and we have to keep the two SPO2 probes to know the preductal and postductal saturation status and temperature probe and a precardial stethoscope, ETCO2, NABP. If the patient is unstable hemodynamic, you have to monitor the invasive blood pressure monitoring also and in the patient with congenital heart diseases. Coming to induction and intubation, awake intubation is preferred in most of these patients. Awake intubation with the fentanyl is considered the better as it avoids the gastric distension. Alternatively, we can try with the inhalation agent with the sabofluorin or halothoin with or without muscle relaxant. But some, some centers, they are the practicing intubating the child with the giving proper um, muscle relaxation also. And in some, some centers, they will practice doing the rigid bronchoscopy and pre-surgical planning to know the number of fistulas and the of the fistulas and position of the ET tube to rule out the tracheomalacia also. Coming to intubation, intubation carried out in the supine position with the head in the neutral position and the appropriate size of ET tube according to the weight of the patient as per 789 formula and the choice of ET tube will be fleximetallic tube. While intubating, keep the bevel of the ET tube posterior and turn 90 degrees 
anterior. Once the air entry is confirmed, keep the endotracheal tube very much inside and draw until bilateral air entry is equal. Make sure absence of any gastric distension by auscultation and attach ETCO2 monitor to gastrostomy tube if present. Pogarty catheter used alternatively for uh, one lung ventilation, but this will be very impractical in small babies and double lumen tubes are also not available in at, at this age group. Or the displacement of the Fogarty balloon may occlude the trachea also. While giving lateral position, we should care, utmost care for it to positioning. It may, it may displace, it may kink. And the, after, ch after changing the position, we have to check the bilateral air, air entry and uh, any gastric encephalation is present or not. Keep the precardial stethoscope in the left axilla to allow the breath to breath monitoring. Coming to intraoperative management, proper analysis with the Narcoticals like fentanyl to microsomes per KZ, IV, or paracetamol suppositories. Marginal relaxation depend upon the associated liver and uh, renal impairments. Inhalation agent of choice will be sevoflurane. Avoid hypoglycemia. Give the dextrose containing fluids if it is less than two days of uh, age baby. And avoid hypothermia. Take second IV line in almost all the cases if it if they are sick for the TPN. Monitor hemodynamics and airway pressures throughout the procedures. Notify surgeon if there is any desaturation. Fluid management according to the fasting guidelines and ongoing losses. And pressure control mode of uh, ventilation is preferred they, as it is having a leak compensation and uh, properly maintain the ETCO2 and SPO2 target should be 92 to 95 percent. Coming to intraoperative complications, desaturation is, desaturation is the most common complication because of one lung ventilation. There can be tube misplacement and tube in case dislodgement. It can be due to hypotension, due to mismatch of the ventilation perfusion, and it can be due to lung retraction. There can be plug at the tip of the endotracheal tube, and sometimes a surgeon accidentally ligates the right side, right side of the bronchus instead of ligating fistula. In these situations, you can commonly identify the desaturation, desaturation and you have to identify the, you have to inform the surgeon immediately and take necessary precautions. And tachycardia may be seen, it can be due to pain, improper pain management or due to hypertension. If it is due to hypertension, give bolus, bolus uh, fluids with normal saline. And there can be hypertension, dislodgement of the monitors and IV lines due to the position and small baby condition and there can be chances of tracheal perforation also during the procedure. And after tracheal fistula is ligated, esophageal anastomosis is planned. Anesthesia just passes the catheter through the nose and mouth and surgeon passes the catheter through the lower end of the esophagus so that they can identify the fistula site and they will do the procedure. Anastomosis is made over the catheter and catheter is pulled out this end of the catheter, catheter is kept just above the suture line. Proximal end of the catheter is marked at the mouth. The distance between the mouth of mouth to the tip of the catheter is noted to guide the suctioning in the post-operative period. Ask the surgeon for any association of trachea malacia because uh, it is very important for the planning of the extubation and post-operative ventilation. In the recovery period, period uh, intercostal block and local infiltration is performed. If the patient is not on the ventilator preoperatively and hemodynamically stable throughout the procedure and if the temperature is normal, if the patient is not having any congenital heart anomalies and if baby is good, weight is good, if the surgeon also exists for the extubation and if there is no trachea malacia and everything is went well, we can extubate the patient after giving reversal. Uh, and don't extend the neck while doing the suctioning at the time of extubation in the postoperative period also. Coming to post-operative period, analgesia with opioid infusions or regional techniques and paracetamol infusions are indicated in these patients. Avoid excessive extension of the neck in any situations while doing suctioning or reintubating or during ventilation. Avoid insertion of the suction catheter more than the predetermined length while suctioning and avoid high pressure suction. So it will damage the suture line and it will cause anastomotic leak. And avoid bag and mask ventilation post-operative period. If the patient requiring the elective ventilation, go for the deep sedation with non-depolarizing muscle relaxation to avoid the spontaneous ventilation as negative intrapleural pressure is transmitted to the anastomotic site and it, it may cause 
in the anastomotic leakage and iv fluids according to the baby weight and serial blood investigations to rule out any sepsis and acidosis and the serial radiological investigations will be done coming to post operative complication there can be hypoxia there can be anastomotic leaks and respiratory infections tracheomalacia and stridor can be seen in the post operative period and esophageal strictures gastroesophageal reflux and esophageal dysmetality is seen in some patients and feeding aversion also coming to conclusion this is a actually anesthesia for the infant so we, we have to take care of the uh, vital parameters and intubation will be difficult in this patient you, apart from the adults there will be different scenarios for the infant we have to follow all these procedures and there can be more chances of association of congenital anamnesis in this patient difficulty in the fixation of et tube due to positioning and and the prematurity low birth weight is also a problem in these patients there will be associated respiratory infections we have to take care of that also intraoperative and post operative desaturation is also one of the problem in these tracheoesophageal fistula patients thank you శ్రీకాంత్ స్టార్ట్ చేయి గుంటూరు బ్యాచ్ ఎవరుంటే వాళ్ళు స్టార్ట్ చేయండి అబ్బా అనురాధా కిరణ్ వీళ్ళందరూ కూడా అక్కడ చాలా ఎక్కువ ఏంటి కదా ట్రికేశ్వర్ ఫిస్టాలు హలో నువ్వు గుంటూరా నాయుడమ్మ నాయుడమ్మ విపరీతంగా చేసేవాడు కదా అవును సార్ చేసేవాడు సార్ నాకు అది తెలుసు సో అందుకోసం ఎవరైనా గుంటూరు బ్యాచ్ ఉంటే బాగా డిస్కస్ చేస్తారని వెయిట్ చేస్తాను నేను అప్పుడే నువ్వు తొందరగా డిస్కషన్ కోసం టైం పెట్టావు సరే చెప్పండి డిస్కస్ చేయండి Sir, good morning, sir. How do you assess blood loss in uh, pediatric patients? And what is the formula for maximum allowable blood loss? Hello? Hello? Uh, sir, am I audible, sir? Yes, sir. Sir, estimation of the blood loss, in, in, especially in the neonatal group, is very difficult, sir. It is uh, based uh, by the observation and the number of the sponge count and mop count, they will also assess. And the neonate is especially having 90 ml per kg body of circulating blood volume, sir. Uh, for maximum allowable blood loss, we have to calculate the estimated blood volume and we had to know the initial hemoglobin and and the final target hemoglobin so then we can estimate the maximum allowable blood loss sir if the 15 to 20% of the blood is lost we have to replace the blood sir and generally if it is more than 50 ml then we have to definitely replace the blood if the loss is more than 50 ml in this age group So, so the target maximum allowable blood loss is up to 8 8 grams sir so estimated blood volume into or uh, initial so hematocrit minus initial hematocrit minus uh, final hematocrit by initial hematocrit sir a target hematocrit by initial hematocrit so what is the hematocrit of uh, prbc sorry ah. this is not for you sir for post dnb students sorry i am not going
సార్ హిమటోక్రేట్ ఆఫ్ ఆర్బీసీ పిఆర్బీసీ సిక్స్టీ టు సెవెంటీ సిక్స్టీ సిక్స్టీ పర్సెంట్ సార్ సిక్స్టీ 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 ప్లస్ సార్ దర్ ఆర్ ఎనీ క్రైటీరియా ఫర్ పోస్ట్ ఆఫ్ వెంటిలేషన్ అపార్ట్ ఫ్రమ్ సర్జన్స్ రిక్వెస్ట్ సార్ ఇఫ్ ద బేబీ ఈస్ హ్యావింగ్ సిగ్నిఫికెంట్ కార్డియాక్ అనామలీస్ అండ్ ఇఫ్ ద బేబీ ఈస్ హ్యావింగ్ అసోసియేటెడ్ రెస్పిరేటరీ ఇన్ఫెక్షన్స్ విచ్ ఈస్ సిగ్నిఫికెంట్ ఇఫ్ ద బేబీ ఈస్ వెన్ ఫర్ మోర్ ప్రొలాంగ్ డ్యూరేషన్ ఆఫ్ సర్జరీ ఇఫ్ ద బేబీ వెన్ ఫర్ మోర్ హైపోథర్మియా and if there is more acidosis we can actually uh, post operatively we can electively ventilate the patient apart from the surgical issues sir if the we baby weight is also very less if the baby yes. weight is also very less also we can uh, electively ventilate sir apart from surgical issues sir. what is the ideal age where you can take electively post this tf sir tf is a uh, emergency surgery sir so ideally you can if the patient is not having any major cardiac anomalies we can take on second or third day third day of the after delivery can after delivery sir. second and third day if the if the baby is having significant significant problems they can go for staged surgeries they will initially go for uh, gastrostomy and they will keep the patient on the tpn and iv fluids and after that they will do a staged procedure they will do gastric pull up sir it is the latest concept previously sir. how do they use it to wait for 6 uh, weeks or so so to gain weight so now they are saying that uh, we can proceed uh, immediately if there is no major abnormalities sir yes yes sir i have a question sir <laughs> so I, i need some clarification sir uh, what is the ideal uh, iv fluid sir sir kiran me oppuko endukante speaker nuve sir sir actually there is a lot of debate on the what is the best iv fluid for the neonates some say it is only dextrose containing fluid some say it is edo teacher amun prasad cheptare in in different articles they are saying differently అలాంటప్పుడు మనం మనకు ఓమ్ని ఆర్కే కానీ ఎంలో కానీ చేసే వాళ్ళు ఎవరు అంటే ఒకసారి లోటస్ కానీ కనుక్కొని మా ఆడే సార్ కొద్ది నియోటల్ నియోటల్ చూసి మా ఆడి చెప్తాను నేనైతే నాకు తెలియదు అంతే సార్ ఫస్ట్ ఇనిషియల్ త్రీ డేస్ దే ఆర్ సేయింగ్ దట్ గివ్ ఓన్లీ డెక్స్ట్రోస్ కంటైనింగ్ ఫ్లూయిడ్స్ టెన్ పర్సెంట్ డెక్స్ట్రోస్ వితౌట్ నార్మల్ సెలైన్ అండ్ ఎనీథింగ్ అండ్ ఇఫ్ ద పేషెంట్ గోస్ ఇన్ టు షాక్ ఆర్ ఇఫ్ దేర్ ఇస్ ఎక్సివ్ బ్లడ్ లాస్ దెన్ గివ్ బాలసెస్ ఆఫ్ టెన్ ఎంఎల్ ఆఫ్ నార్మల్ సెలైన్ ఆర్ రింగర్ లాక్టేట్ some say give 0.2% normal serine with 5% dextrose they add in the burette set and give as a maintenance fluid but there is uh, no uniform guidelines that part i want to clarify from senior our pediatrician in rk hospital uh, follows off dns plus 5 uh, milli equivalents of kcl okay sir
ఏంటి సైలెంట్ అయిపోయారు కిరణ్ తెలుసు సార్ ఏం లేదా శ్రీకాంత్ అయిపోయిందా డిస్కషన్ అయిపోయిందా హలో శ్రీకాంత్ ఉన్నాడా లేదు ఫోన్ లేదు నువ్వు చెప్పు డిస్కషన్ అయిపోయిందా సార్ మామూలుగా అయితే అయిపోయింది సార్ ఏమైనా డౌట్స్ ఉంటే క్లారిఫై చేస్తాం సార్ అలాగే రైట్ థ్యాంక్ యూ సార్ హలో హలో ఓకే కిరణ్ సార్ ఇంకేమైనా క్వశ్చన్స్ ఏం లేకపోతే ఇంకా వెళ్ళు ఆయన అయిపోయింది కదా డిస్కషన్ అడగడు కదా బాబా ఐసీ వాళ్ళు కరెక్ట్ గా కేస్ చేస్తున్నారు ఆయన అడిగా అది పిలిచినట్టు ఉన్నారు కదా సార్ అరిచారా ఓకే ఈ గ్రూప్ సార్ సార్ డెఫినెట్లీ సార్ ఓకే సార్ థ్యాంక్ యూ